travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. Get your kicks on routes next to sex. It winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way. Get your kicks on routes next to sex. So we're at the Disneyland Hotel for the Route 66, the Road Ahead Conference, talking about the future of Route 66. In 2008, Route 66 was included on the World Monuments Watch. It posed a challenge for World Monuments Fund. With the introduction of the interstate highway system, many of the Route 66 communities were bypassed. And this livelihood and thriving culture of business, commerce, and the arts that once existed on Route 66 began to diminish. There's a lot of places on Route 66 that are there that can be rehabilitated. Maybe they've been allowed to run down. It is our goal to provide resources to communities and states to help preserve the authentic places, the idiosyncratic places of Route 66. We were very fortunate to be able to partner with the National Park Service and Rutgers University and to have the support of American Express to develop an economic impact study which truly demonstrated the benefits of historic preservation and heritage tourism. Get your kicks on Route The conference is very much like Route 66. When we started this study, frankly, I, I was very humbled. How can you wrap your arms around a 2,500 mile very special place? In our overall Route 66 marketing campaign, we are featuring the people of the route. And so we highlight a waitress at the Palms Grill Cafe. Uh, we highlight Bill Shea, who has in Illinois the Springfield uh, Gas Station Museum that's a must stop along Route 66. But we highlight the person and we allow for people to explore that person and the place that they love so much. And that we're finding resonates really playing up that why travel matters and that economic development story um, is super important because it's there and tourism really has an impact. My name is Alan Affelt and I'm the owner of La Posada Hotel in Winslow, Arizona. Well, La Posada was going to be torn down by the Santa Fe Railway. They built it in 1930, closed it in 1957, and by 1994 they just didn't need the space anymore, so they were going to knock it down. So we really just bought it on a lark because this is one of the great icons of Route 66, and it was going to be torn down. It's our objective to draw attention to um, the plight of Route 66 and try to revitalize interest and investment in its future. You know, you put your heart and soul into it. You have maybe even some mechanical skills. You can remodel a place. You can, you can restore a place to its former glory. I go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, and Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty, you'll see. Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, Flagstaff, Arizona, don't forget Winona, Kingland, Boston, San Bernardino, aren't you? I get hit to this timely tip. I have seen Route 66 evolve mainly in its demographic. Um, initially when I came to the Rock Cafe, I was intrigued by it because I loved Europe and I loved traveling and that was the tourists up and down the road. And then as, as time went on, as we started getting more and more people along the road, I saw artists. I started meeting all these creative minds from, from America. And then those guys somehow got the government involved and the state level started paying attention and all these people were entering the doors. Pixar, of course, was going to make a movie on Route 66. We didn't know exactly what they were gonna do. Radiator Springs, the glorious jewel strung on the necklace of Route 66. The mother road. So uh, we just knew that they were all gonna show up at the hotel for a few days and work on storyboards. And sure enough, the cars come rolling out, they start unpiling all this equipment, and they immediately just like start taking pictures of everything. There was a group of us in three Cadillacs for about eight to 10 days with Michael Wallace, who is well known as a historian and tour guide. And uh, they immediately asked me to turn on the neon sign. I was like, oh God, heartbroken. 
because it was broken. And I'm like, I'm in the process of receiving a grant. I close down next month to go through this grant process, but if you set your cameras up, I can blink the light off and on. Boy, when the movie came out, it really put La Posada and so much of Route 66 on the map for a whole nother generation. In the movie Cars, we uh, were looking for ways to sort of create a, uh, a world that has sort of a signature, a meaning to it. And Route 66 is the, um, the charm of it is partially the older buildings and the layering that you see like on the walls with the old signs. And then if you're restoring a place or sort of recognizing it as a, this is a historical location, you don't want to make it look like it's brand new. It is not. Uh, at all like the experience of traveling an interstate where everything is homogenized and you know when you get off an exit you're going to find the same kind of place to eat that you'd find 15 more miles down the road. No, what Route 66 did and what it does to a degree now but what it can do even more in the future is go back to its roots and become idiosyncratic all over again. The involvement of World Monuments Fund helps move us from thinking about Route 66 at a community and state level to a more macro, national, and global level. I think the core message of the World Monument Fund for this uh, convention or, or seminar this weekend is to uh, bring all of the communities along Route 66 together and to unify them so we can better tell our message. It's a message that's a, a message of history, a message of uh, glamour, a message of excitement. This is a great moment to revitalize Route 66. Preserving the Mother Road is important not only because of its past significance, but because of its potential for building a better future for the five million people who live along Route 66.